Hi, it's Anna Mason, and in this mini class, I'm going to show you how to paint this sweet little citrus swallowtail caterpillar in watercolour. Because it only takes about half an hour to paint, I'm sharing the full tutorial with you. Below, you'll find a printable outline drawing so you can trace yours and paint with me. Let's get started. So I'm going to use the zero brush and we're going to start by mapping out each of the different hue areas, colour areas within the caterpillar. And the lightest colours within the caterpillar are those sort of that pale white stripe that is got along the underside. So we're going to try and leave that at this stage with no paint on, but everywhere else we want to have a pale version of the colour that we can see there. So let's begin with the sort of lightest, brightest colours. Let's go with the yellowy green that we can see more at the kind of head end. So we've got Windsor Lemon, quite watery, and then to make it green, adding a touch of permanent sap green. And I always keep a little bit more yellow than I think I need to because it tends to dry a bit more dull. And then going to place this into that area. And then I'm just holding off from any areas that might that are a different colour. Like we've got some little sort of brown kind of spots there. And again, we've got some different markings there, which I can come in and work on later. Just really watery and just holding off from that lighter strip down the bottom. There's a lot of strange detail in there, which we'll have to probably approximate some of it because we're working quite small. But I'm going to apply this yellowy colour into all of those green areas of the caterpillar at this stage because we can darken up with the darker greens that we can see there. But there are little bits of this yellow colour kind of throughout much of it, so it's a good one to use as a as a base. And it can go under these little dots. I'm just going around that darker spot or darker section there. I'm going to apply it all the way along here. So tip of the brush, making sure I'm staying within my pencil boundary. And that bit there. Now let's go with some yellow ochre to pick out those kind of more yellowy brown areas. So the head here, I can put it into those little ears <laughs> and then a little bit on these feet here, a little bit in here, perhaps in there. I've not got much detail in my drawing there but a little bit of it there. And then I'm going to put it on the rest of these feet actually as well because although they're a darker brown most of them there is a few lighter bits within them so it wouldn't hurt to have this colour down there and it just helps with identifying which bit of bits which bits are feet. That bit's got a sort of slight browny hue to it so I'll pop a bit there too. Now I'm going to go in with the stem colour. So let's mix a slightly darker green. Well, I'm going to use this colour actually for the top part of the stem because that's got the yellow colour to it. This should already be dried off so it's not going to bleed into those feet. But then as we come down it's getting a lot darker so I'm just going to change that mix. We'll have more of the permanent sap green. And then I think it's going to need some of the Payne's grey. And I'll keep some of that Windsor Lemon in there as well because I'm trying to match to the lightest colour within. You might even want to go down to a smaller brush size. Make sure that your brush has got a good 
tip to it and I'm trying to leave that's an important little gap there in the composition so I'm trying to leave that and just really carefully go around these feet to say they're dried off now so there's no gap here there's another little gap in there underneath the caterpillar above the stem it's looking a bit paler there because I've just been spreading the paint out a bit more that's fine for this stage so just working along the stem in lines like that now what I want to do, I'm going to go down to the treble zero, maximum control for this, and I want to start to darken up the caterpillar some more. I'm going to create a mix. I need a sort of more vibrant green for the bottom part, so for that I'm going to use some of the Windsor green yellow shade and perhaps a bit of the permanent sap green so it's not quite as bright, and then a bit of the Windsor lemon in there it's got that much more vibrant almost an artificial looking green although here we do see it so I'm going to just pop this in along the bottom and I'm not confident that that's the right color it's looking too dark although I think that's really just a feature of how pale I've got that initial um, wash on here but I'm just going to use this to apply over the top of or along the top of rather the white strip at the bottom because that's going to help make that stand out to me as well as I start to do more darkening up and I can also see this vibrant green sort of up here keeping it nice and pale and almost in here as well but now I'm going to work to darken up that sort of top um, section where it's, I think, curving away and we start to get shadow. So I'm going to get some Payne's Grey here, a little bit of Burnt Sienna, and that's going to make that nice sort of black colour, which I'm going to dilute down and then add in a bit of permanent sap green to create that kind of greyish green colour, keeping it pale do a test out that looks about right and then I'm going to just apply that along the top and we we're going to need to have quite a graduated transition so I'll have obviously working with the tip along the pencil line but then slightly feathering that edge as it comes over because I don't see that coming down much further than that and I see it as quite a graduated transition so I'll work into that with subsequent layers but I just want to have that feathered uneven edge as we transition into the lighter colour. So I'll just go ahead and finish using this colour. And I'm just going to pick out a few other areas where I see this kind of hue. So some little details in here I'm working so small I can't really paint them all but I'm just going to give an impression of a bit of texture with this colour in here. So it's just in those first few feet. Now I'm really itching to get in the darkest tones but a lot of those are as markings on there's a really black patch here there's a kind of black patch here but there's also the lines which are very dark and I don't want to paint those in until I'm confident that we've got the skin looking as dark as it should be so I think instead I'm going to focus on the very dark of the stem because if we get that right it'll help give us that visual anchor, anchor on the page so that we can see how dark we should be taking the rest of our caterpillar so I've just mixed some permanent sap green and some Payne's Grey and some burnt sienna to create a really rich dark green and that I'm going to apply into the darkest parts 
of the stem. I want it to be not so dark that I can't do further darkening because when you really look right under the caterpillar is even darker so I'm going to want to apply another layer right under the caterpillar to just give a bit more of a sense of that shadow but this is looking like a good colour to be applying over here. The layer underneath is totally dry now. And then as we come up here, it's only really present this dark colour in a strip along the top and a narrower strip along the bottom. So just using the tip of the brush to create that. We need to come in and work on that some more, but I'll keep painting this section with this colour. And then where the caterpillar is no longer casting such a shadow, it's a bit lighter the other side here, but it is dark on the underside. So we have a strip down here. And then if I go back to that mixture that had some of the Windsor lemon, as well as the permanent sap green, um, I'm going to just come in and use that here. Just work on the mid-tones there. Just going to get a little bit lighter. I can start to use that as the line colour here. It's a line that's just where the caterpillar is casting the shadow. And use that as the line on the underside of this top part. I think I'm going to use this colour down here too. Now, wanting to keep the vibrancy, so back to Windsor Lemon, and I think I'm going to add in some of that permanent sap and Windsor Green yellow shade, just for a bit more vibrancy to work on this part up here. And I'm just working over and into that darker line I'd applied just trying to soften those transitions without too much effort by applying this next layer. And we can come back and do a bit more darkening up there as it dries later. But that's giving us that good, dark, rich colour. I'm going to actually just go in again with the really dark colour and just do that, as I was saying, that bit of darkening up just right under there where it's really dark. And now let's go back to the caterpillar skin then and let's recreate our yellow, uh, yellowy green mix. So Windsor Lemon, a bit of the permanent sap green, and maybe a little bit of that yellow ochre just to mute it down a bit. But now this is quite a lot thicker than what I was using before, but I'm going to work in and over that darker area and over that brighter green area. So starting to create a softer transition there. I do want it to feel lighter in the middle. That's how we're going to get the sense of the caterpillar curving. But I think both of those layers can cope with this going over the top and darkening them, but they'll, it, we still get those different hues coming through. And this might, well it does, flatten it off a bit because we haven't got such a big tonal range now. It's flattening it off. But we can build that back in with an additional layer to do a bit more darkening. Definitely going to want to do that at the bottom and I think at the top too. So let's just finish this off. And then a bit more yellow in and just working into these sections up at the top. So let's go back to a darker mix. So this was a mix that had permanent sap green, burnt sienna and Payne's grey in it. I'm just going to keep it 
quite watery so that I can make a subtle adjustment. But as that's dried off, just go back in, darken up again. We really do want that nice soft transition. So I can go in and work on those transitions with just water on my brush a bit later if I need to. But for now, just really want to work on getting that tonal variation looking right. Because if you take a look at that caterpillar photo, you can really get a sense of that darker strip at the top. If you struggle to see this, one way is always to take a look at it from a distance, get up and move right back and then you start to see the shapes of tones a little bit better from a distance. I think you can get too caught up in being really, really close with it. So I'm also going to just use the tip to work on that very extreme edge there, which is darker. And actually this colour mix is a good one to use for this little dark shape in here. So whilst I've got it, I will do that. And I think I've already done that there. There's another little V shape there. Starting to want to work into here more as well, which is fine. Just use that, to uh, use the tip of the brush just to create a bit of that rough visual texture. As I say, we can't go into every minute detail because we're just working so small. If we'd enlarged, we could. And of course, by all means, feel free to enlarge this. It would be a lot of fun to work on bigger as well take you longer but that's part of the process. So now I want to darken up that dark, the brighter green section again so let's get some of that Windsor green yellow shade and just work on particularly that line immediately up next to the white strip just going in there darkening that up. Might even want to put a bit of that dark colour in there as well really want that to stand out and I'm just sort of almost dotting to create a line because I want to have a textured line there so that's what I'm seeing in terms of the visual texture um, you can see I've sort of missed off this bottom bit I'm just going to water down this green to be a greeny watery mixture just to colour in that section there which actually I think needs to be that's going to be a really dark bit but we'll come in and add that detail a bit later on so back to this mix, oh, this one, and just darkening up at that edge. I'm just looking now whilst I've got this colour. Is there anywhere else I want to use it? I don't think so. So now let's take a look at that. I think it just needs a subtle shift in a few areas. So I'm going to go in with back to a mixture that's got the Windsor lemon and some permanent sap green and I think that probably had a little bit of the Windsor green yellow shade as well it does now so it's still quite bright but it's quite watery I just want to make some subtle adjustments so I want to soften that transition there I've got a bit of an unwanted hard line edge which happens more in the sketchbook I have to say but it's good practice for fixing that. And then I'm just going to work on that transition zone a little bit lower down from the dark strip along the top. But not going all the way down. We want that lighter section through the middle to really give the curved sense of the caterpillar. And just while I'm here, I'm going to add in a bit of yellow ochre or get a bit of yellow ochre mixture to work in that bit. Well, that's looking quite good. Just see if there's any areas I think perhaps just up here. Not so much under. So now I want to go in with the brown details, the darker brown details. So let's get some burnt sienna yellow ochre together a little bit of Payne's grey let's get some of that over here let's pick out some of the darkest bits first so that's really just burnt sienna Payne's grey I'm just 
I'm going to add a little bit more of that yellow ochre and then using the tip of the brush to just pick out the darkest bits to the head under here. Actually that's looking maybe a bit too dark so I'm going to add in more of the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre. And you really want it all to be dried off so there's no bleeding in with this dark colour. And I'm just going to pick out some sort of liney details that I can see, but this detail is quite a challenge at this small size. And just working in in a sort of dotty, stippled way into the feet so that there are a few gaps through to the lighter colour underneath. Here, liney details on these as well. As we come down, they get darker. So, and they darker in the sort of right hand side of them as well. One there. But as I say, just leaving a few paler gaps through. It's not really brown there so much. And then just trying to pick out some of this detail here. I'm going to create a more of a black mixture. So that's Payne's Grey Burnt Sienna together. I'm just going to pick out that really dark section here. I don't know if that's the pretend head of the caterpillar. Some of them do that, don't they? And then I'm going to hold off of putting that dark dot there because I want to darken around that. But I think I can at this stage put this dark one in here, which I think I'm putting in the right place. Dark little bit there. Maybe a tiny bit down here. And then we're going to get into doing these lines, which I'm keen to do. But let's just hold off. Let's just darken these kind of mid-brown sections. Let's use some of the yellow ochre and burnt sienna together and just water that down, a bit more yellow ochre just to work on the lighter part. So up here these are more little spots really. Probably could be a bit more orange but I'm not going to worry about that too much for this. And then just darkening up using this so that there aren't some really bright bits to these feet. A little bit more of this colour down there. And then in the head, I do want to leave a few gaps through to this lighter colour. I'm just going to squeeze my brush off, it felt a bit watery there. And then this is a bit more orange, we could add in, seeing as we have it on the palette, a little bit of orange, if not you could add in a little bit of red. Just there, just a bit of detail here, a bit more perhaps with this orange into here and into these feet. And now we're into the final details really. So let's add in the really dark spots. This is all dried off. Just going to do some tiny little dots in there to mirror that visual texture I can see there. And then teeny tiny dots on each of the sections. Two of them on some of them. This one here, checking that's dried. And then I just want to water down, perhaps mix with a little bit of that green. I want a slightly lighter colour 
to just start to define these sections. So I've got my pencil lines as a guide and I'm just going to go over those. These lines just extend into and around, if you can see the bottom of them, the whiter section at the bottom of before between the green part of the caterpillar and the feet. And then I'm just going to use the very tip in the same mixture to apply a very fine line along the very top. So it's just defining the edge and giving it that extra darkening. And now this is just the final details. I'm just going to add in some extra brown details. I noticed as I was working around that I'd missed this darker patch here. So I'm just working into that and the extra bit of detailing there as it comes down, these little tiny shapes darker on the edge there. So this is where you can spend as long as you like really just adding in the extra details but when it's a small piece like this you don't need to spend too long if you don't want to. It can still yield a realistic result so I'm just darkening those left sides again of the caterpillar and just a bit more detail down in here and then I just want to darken the white strip a touch so I'm going to get just taking some of this green mixture which has got some of the paints grey in so it's sort of bluey green grey very watery don't want to do this too much and then just going to concentrate on these lower ones just sort of slightly stipple them so it's not a really even covering and then I think I'll hold off of these because this is where it's lighter and then I'm just doing a sort of check over the whole thing are there any areas that need to be darkened I think this bit in here could do with another layer on mine ours will probably need different things at this stage I'm just going to have a bit of the lemon Windsor lemon and just it's not too wet just pop it around that because I feel like that has that slightly more yellow color and also same up here you can always make hue adjustments as well as you go and just checking I've got the shape right so just working in to the bottom here feeling like that needs a little bit more just to give it that more of that curved shape by having more of a tonal distinction and then returning to the stem and just doing a little bit of extra darkening up there especially on the top and the bottom So just doing some neatening up of edges and just picking out any other little details perhaps using brown mixes to add a little bit more of detail into and darkening to the edges of these feet I just want to use this brown kind of mix had some uh, it's mostly yellow ochre I think in with some green sort of a greyish brownie mixture and I just want to work into this section here as I stand back and sort of assess mine as a whole just feel like that lower section where it's sort of curving over 
just needs to be a bit darker and just shifting that colour so it's not quite as vibrant. Be a bit careful there because it's just going into that area of the dark colour and I don't want to lift that dark colour. And then just a final bit of detail and darkening so I'll just make a few last adjustments to mine. Finally, just almost just water on the brush, just softening a few hard line edges with just a gentle, as I say, mostly just water, maybe a little bit of green, but just a gentle touch of the brush just to make sure your transitions feel right. If you've enjoyed this mini class, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hop on over to animatonart.com where you can take full length video classes for free and find a whole heap of resources to help you pick up your brush and paint the way you've always wanted to. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon to help you capture the beauty of nature on your paper.